Yeah. Mm. I think the no, I, I definitely agree. He's like a uh, he's like a, a PR pope. Could, yeah, figurehead pope. The essence of what's going to happen is going to be shown, and what happens as a result. If if they're like Sheldon talked about seeds sown, um, and they're going to come up, and we will see. Um, we will see if there are more thorns than anything else, or if it's just uh, what's that stuff that looks like the wheat, the shit, the the, the tears. Mm -hmm. That resemble the wheat. He, he just could be sowing us. Uh, yes, yes, I know what you're talking about. You know, uh, that was not with it, not or something. Uh, I forget. Could it could it be also that he's on a leash, um, self-imposed leash, because he doesn't want to disrespect the other pope that's alive? Because you know, when they whenever they got a new pope. Normally, the other one had already died off or something, but this one, this one's still alive, so he didn't want to disrespect this other pope. I don't know about the disrespect, because mm -hmm. that other pope, you know, he's still a, he's still pope, yeah. in a sense, yeah. but he's he's not on the quote-unquote world stage. Okay. I don't know what Oh, I think it's, it's probably more so he doesn't want to get Forcibly removed by the other folk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, I, I honestly believe that the reason the other pope resigned had had nothing to do with health, uh, but everything to do with um, the scandal, child molestations that was reaching into the Vatican because of the bishop that supposedly he brought into the Vatican to work, who was supposed who um. Um, someone who was involved in that way, either by action or by covering up. I can't remember which one it was. So I, I, I think that's what pulled him off um, the uh, throne of Pope, as opposed to anything else. So it doesn't, it, that being said, it doesn't mean that he gave up any authority whatsoever. Uh, he's, I, I, from the beginning, I, I believe, I, and I think I made a statement, that um, they were representative of the two-headed monster. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, yeah. That that the, the two authorities there, and wow. and, and um, when when you have two heads or two authorities, one or two things are going to happen. They're going to fight against each other, you know, mm -hmm. no matter how quietly it is, or they're going to conspire together to move forward. So uh, they go uh, based on compromise or whatever they choose to do. And, and from the way it looks, you have one right singer who um, was uh, seemingly, seemingly uh, diametrically opposed to the um, statements that, that this new Francis is, uh, is making. And, and, I, and one of the concerns, the uh, thoughts that I had concerning that is that Francis is actually Italian. He's not, you know, he, he was born in Argentina, but he was born to Italian parents. And, and I've always questioned whether or not his parents left um, Italy when um, the Nazis left um, Germany after Hitler and um, the fascists left Italy after Mussolini. And, and you know, we took up um, hiding in, in South America. I just want, you know, I've always wanted if his parents were one of those, and if indeed they were, then that sheds the light you know, on the uh, whole thing. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I have a few thoughts about it. That's all. I have another question. I see a lot of things happening, like in Mexico with the floods, um, Colorado. Um, I know light sheds exposed darkness. Um, is it going to get worse? Are we going to see more things manifesting physically as we, we look at it as being bad or worse? But will more things happen? 
before we start seeing, I guess, more spiritual things? I think, I think what you see are uh, our spiritual things. Okay, maybe I it's should. It's a manifestation of it, as, a, as above, so below. Yes, okay. Um, a matter of fact, people that I was talking about on the way down this morning, um, they, had this, they had this headline that says that uh, Colorado Russia to restore washed out roads. And I made the statement to her that, you know, you, you, you didn't hear that in America, that, of that magnitude. That, that was other countries like, you know, Mexico, and China, Japan, etc. But I, I think that um, the destruction of it all is representative of um, how destructive the um, the um, anti-messianic ideas are, the anti the uh, the um, policies of of um, the leadership of this world, which is this country, mm -hmm. how they how they are chaotic and destructive. Um, I believe I believe that we're going to physically see even worse. Yeah. Um, because of, of, of light, it exposes it. And it doesn't mean that some of this stuff hadn't been happening in a sense. Uh, <coughs> not necessarily the, the natural things we see, but other worse things, it's just not been exposed. And what we have to do is make sure we're not detracted and distracted, uh, that we have to what's the word, they call those things that be not as though they were, just because we see it doesn't you know, that's not the reality. It, it's a manifestation of a spiritual thing, but we've got to set the spiritual tone. So I think it's going to be, I think what we're going to physically see is a lot worse. But we've got we to gotta be aware that, that we can't get off track because of what, what, what's, what, what's in the closet and we just open the door of the closet and turn the light on. My expectation is that um, Good morning. Hey. is that um, we um, uh, by, by the end of the year, where things are going to really, really peak, and you can call it global warming, you can call it the result of whatever you want to call it, the spiritual um, darkness. It, that's what it's the results of. It's, it's the results of um, confusion. So I, I, I think that um, we've only seen the tip of the iceberg as well. And the, the one of the things that, that, that we have kind of taken our eyes off of um, with, the, um, with the fires, with the, the uh, flooding and stuff, uh, we've taken our eyes off of one of them. And one of the things we've taken our eyes off of is the is that the economic situation is not changing? Yeah, mm -hmm. the the God of this world is still wreaking havoc. Um, uh, um, I, I heard this guy make a statement that um, what people are beginning to realize the reason that that poor the number of poor people in this country doubled is not so much because um, economics has made that lot that bit big of a change is that people came to realize that there's no such thing as a middle class. You either poor or you rich. Right. And, 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 and coming to that realization, um, they have given up the Ponzi scheme of, of the, this idea of being middle class. Uh, either you, it, it, the, the idea of two Americas is real. If you, you're either poor or you're rich. It, it, it's, it's just that simple. And, and um, one of the things that, that, that determines that, if you think about it from this perspective, if you, it does not matter, you can have $4 million, $5, $10 million, and no insurance, and be broke with one illness. With one illness. Um, they were talking about um, the ad that the, the um, that the Koch brothers did against Obamacare, and how um, if you have cancer, if the first time that you have cancer, the, the minimum is going to be about a million bucks. And when you consider the Koch brothers were $72 billion, they don't have to have insurance. 
but they tell me everybody else, they don't, you know, they don't need me. Uh, one of the Koch brothers in, had cancer, and in order to do the cancer research uh, for the type of cancer he had, they donated a cancer research center to MIT. But he tell you, you know, <laughs> you, you see? Yes. So, so it's, it's like, if you, if it, middle class does not exist, it only exists in your mind. But in reality, everybody's on the brink except those who are super rich. Wall Street is Wall Street. So. Which says then that those of us on the brink need to look somewhere else for our sustenance and not at the materialistic stuff because it, it will never happen. It's like it's a, it's like it's a it's, it's a dream that we keep going after uh, instead of uh, it's a distraction. It's a carrot and a stick. Yeah, it, it. That makes real Look, an illusion. Twenty five years lives. ago, um, at Great New Faith Found and Mount Carmel, I made a statement that the day is coming. We will live to see the day when we will have to depend on on God at the time of because I can see things, but I do know. Uh, for our healing because you will not have health insurance. Only the wealthy people have that. I made that statement 25 years ago. And, and the reality has been here for a moment, you know? Because when you think about even the idea of Obamacare, uh, it does not guarantee you health insurance. It just guarantees that the health insurance companies don't go out of business. Because that's who you got to buy it from. So, it, it's... It, it, so I see that, it, well, I think what we've done um, is, is compartmentalize things. You know, uh, we, 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 we put economic, we do the health thing, we do uh, the disasters like the, the fires and the floods and stuff. It, we compartmentalize it, and when you compartmentalize, you don't see the whole picture. And everything looks like it's independent of the other, when all of it is actually tied together uh, through our uh, spiritual confusion, doctors are misunderstandings. You see, you understand what I'm saying? So, so we have to look beyond that. I mean, because even when you look at it from an educational perspective, um, uh, it does, you know, you can get, you can go to school and, and get an MBA and go to work and still be a part of the working poor because the money that you have to pay back for your education. Yeah. You, you see? And did you think I see the um, special on the Sudanese and the, the pirates and all of that stuff with taking the ships? No, I didn't. Um, that that uh, that it revealed it from another perspective. Um, you know, you, you read about the Black Hawk Down thing and all of that stuff, and it talked about how the U.S. helped to destabilize um, um, the country, and so folks. <coughs> Folk are doing what they need to do. It, it, it all fits into everything. It's like, you know, we think apart from them that they're just out there trying to take somebody else's stuff. But if you look at the country, um, they, have, uh, they have nothing. And what they had was taken away from them, like Haiti. Yeah. So um, we, we, yeah. We, yeah. We, we fed into that, in other words. You know that Tom Hanks movement is coming out? Which one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. About about the pirate, like the pirates taking over ship. Oh, yeah, yeah. so stupid. <laughs> Tom Hanks will not be able to save that movie. Like it's just going to be uh, trying to make a bunch of you know international shipping companies look good. Uh, the um, measured up again. It's got kind of a bunch of poor people. Like what? <laughs> well, what we saw the piracy um, really expanded. It was the. When they took the fishing, fishing lanes away. It, yeah, it was that. It was something else as well. Not only were they take fishing and, uh, and taking up all of their fisheries, uh, they also were dumping toxic uh, waste yeah. right off of their coast. So you would have these there. large cargo bins uh, washing the shore, and you had a lot of people that were dying from all of these uh, chemicals, but it was just waste from uh, pretty much uh, the Western nations because it was cheaper to dispose it uh, there than to have it disposed properly where it actually came from. And um, I, I think, honestly, I think um, Putin gave a real message as to why all this stuff is happening and from a political perspective. And uh -huh. I, I don't think anybody really paid any attention. 
when they were asking him about the whole idea of the homosexual question, and he said that the reason he did it is because we have to understand that um, Europeans are dying out, and you can't get babies from a homosexual relationship. That's a deeper message than that. That's a real, de a much deeper message than that. Because all he was saying was that um, Europeans are not reproducing at the rate of people of color. That's all he was saying. And we have to do something about it. So it goes deeper than homosexuality. Goes back to my perception of surviving. That's it. Wow. As a as a European. Yes. So so when you look at all those things and begin to put them together, and then you and then you couple that with the idea of um, the the uh, statement. Um, America love it or leave it ideas and see how much um, see uh, how much the love is for authority or who's in authority rather as opposed to loving America itself. The, the same people who love it, love to leave it folks are the ones who would rather see it destroyed uh, than to have um, a, a one of African descent to be successful. And, 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 and I, was, I was speaking with uh, someone this week, and they were saying to me, I really don't think that, 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 um, the, that, that white people understand the poor, and those, uh, that they are killing themselves when they fight the uh, idea of, of uh, insurance and, and food stamps and stuff. Because, you know, for the food stamps, stuff like Walmart and, and all the other uh, McDonald's and stuff, people know them more, he's just up with this, up with that's going right. But anyway, um, and I, my, my, my response to that was, yes, they do. They know what they're doing. Because I remember the special I saw where these white people were saying that they would rather be without than to see black people have the same thing they got. <laughs> but they didn't say black people. So I, keep, they I, used I stay in the ditch course. to keep you in the ditch kind yeah. of. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> but that's, that's it. And you, you know, you know um, what the lady from South Carolina say, Miss America Patrick, twenty-seven percent of South Carolina is trail apart. That's how we roll. Mm -hmm. And she had to apologize for it. <laughs> oh, gracious. But 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 when you think about that kind of attitude, she said mobile phone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, that's how we roll. But but that but when you think about that attitude, and then you look at the idea of the 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 pervasive ignorance. Uh, on Twitter concerning the lady of Indian descent who became Miss America, they said she an Arab, Al Qaeda one. When are we go get an American to be Miss America? I mean, oh, you, you see? And yet we have an Arab terrorist governor in South Carolina. Yeah, <laughs> or, or based upon that theory, of course. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's those are the kind of things we that that um, there is a mosaic of issues that that, that um, need to be woven together in, in some type of tapestry so we can see the big picture and show the big picture. And, and the bottom line of it all is uh, you are me and I'm you. And, yeah. And all of this stuff, uh, uh, <coughs> there, again, to perpetuate that uh, sense of us and them when we are one. We are one. And that's, uh, I'm so glad you brought that up. That's the question you asked. Mm -hmm. and the reason is because that in itself says that we're being effective. Because, because we see it, right? We, not only that, it's, it's being uncovered. The last throws. You know, in the throes of death, you fight the hardest. You, you, you go to the extremes. You do whatever it takes wow. to, to, to survive, to hold on. And that, well, that's what we are experiencing. Mm. We, be, we begin to see the extremes in everything. Mm. Mm. I was going to say the, uh, <clears throat> the reason it gets more difficult is because the ones who are making it more difficult realize, can, are beginning to see, and they do see that uh, they're the time that we will allow them to do what they're doing is actually running out very quickly. Yes. And it's not something they can stop. It's something that they can prolong as long as their whatever power they hold on to allows them to. 
but it means they're going to lose their minds trying to hold on to what they have. Well, this is um, what you say, man. What we allow them to do. We are moving yeah. forward. We are stopping it. We are changing it. That's what we have to hold on to. As opposed to just thinking it's happening, you know, but, oh my God, it's going to happen on its own. It's not going to happen. Right because that's the truth concerning the existence of, you know, any sort of inequality at all. It's kind of our fault. It is our fault. <laughs> totally. See, you know, looking at that thing when we did Judah and Tamar, and you know, remember, and Lot, and, and how the Messiah came from the lineage of the combination of um, Abraham and Lot again. They they they, they parted yeah. initially for, for whatever reasons, but it was mainly more physical from Lot's perspective at at the time. But um, but 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 I mean it, it's just a diagram of of um, oneness. We have to get it together. We have to we have to see everything is intertwined and everything is part of the other um, before things start uh, looking that way, in other words, in the physical. So um, everything is a distraction to keep us from looking I at one <clears throat> the, uh, In the Hopi prophecy, they say uh, essentially the end times. We need to begin to recognize the signs that let you know it's the end times that you should go inside your house and pray. And pray? And pray. And so there's nothing you can do except to go inside your house and pray. That's the same so, thing that the Bible says too. So the question is, uh, what is your house and, and what is prayer? That's it. Um, and I know we talked about both of those things. Um, so we have to make a choice about whether or not we are going to allow the physical circumstances to distract us from the reality of what physical even is, or um, remain true to who and what we are. And the house refers to our body or any sort of enclosure actually um, and uh, the prayer is what you desire to connect to and the house so, is not necessarily just the physical body right right that you're talking about it's not that it is the essence of it is the essence of of, 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 of our origin. Uh, well, in this, this case, physical body, the house is the physical body, but yes, it's not necessarily that. So the house is anything that is, a house is anything that is an appearance that uh, hides something that is real. Um. All it is is just in a shell okay. around something else, yeah. like an onion okay. or like an egg. So, so um, we, when we, the last time that we came together, when I talk about we coming together, I talk about when all of the um, facilitators came together, we formed a, uh, I got the answer. I was, I was asking myself as you were talking about the house, what came to me was in my father's house of many mansions. So how do you get a mansion out of a house? You see? How does a mansion come out of a house? Well, if we look at it just for expert uh, understanding or to put it out there to see if I can see it clearly. If we look at out the body as being the house, right? Then when we came together as facilitators, we became a mansion. Can you see that? Yes. 
because each one of us is bigger than that just that yes the, ha the our house yeah the other thing about mansion is you know you look at that from a a, a natural perspective and it's just bigger and you know you just got a bigger and better house but from the spiritual perspective it is connecting to I, th I think um Sheldon talk about that talked about the big fish last time. You remember Sheldon last week they caught the big fish and then they threw the other small fish back. The big fish rep is the essence of of um, um, of connecting to our origin and and, and, and the mansion is is only a um, a simile for what's even greater than just each one of us right in our own little world kind of thing. Yeah, I see the house is, uh, the house and mansion connection being that the mansion is uh, expansive and never ending. Mm -hmm. That you can automatically connect to it. It's still your house, but it's just getting larger and larger in what you have access to, etc. Mm -hmm. So, that being the case, um, we recognize the necessity to for to um, not the necessity, but the truth that's um, involved in the um, Hopi prophecy, um, or the words of wisdom from the Hopi, then it is necessary not only for us to deal with it, with it from the perspective of the house, individual bodies or individual pieces of sparks, but also for, for us to um, come together as the mansion or as a blaze and deal with it. And, and, and talk about how to um, what, what, what to connect to and how to connect to what the it that we connect to and how to um, move um, beyond these chaotic circumstances to a, to a place of fall uh, balance. At your at the meeting at your house, I believe it was the um, was the overnighter. We were talking about. Um, you know the importance of of, of, of of our setting the tenor for what goes on, right? Uh, and and all of these things, as you said, are just um, um, probably pro part of the results of, of of that of that meeting too. That that things are being exposed. That and, and we should expect it. We shouldn't. We shouldn't. It's gonna, it's gonna, we're gonna see other stuff. So it's doing what it is we said it would do, in other words. And all along we stay the course, in spite of what others see, the illusions of what others, others see and what we see. That, that the world is going to, to, the, to, the, to the dogs and all that stuff, you know. And and the chaotic circumstances and conditions are actually necessary in order for things to be balanced. So, because if they're not exposed, you don't do it. It's almost like expressing toxins. You know, like the earth, yeah. earth well, expresses toxins when it, uh, when you have the volcanoes erupt. And it's almost like this universe, this, this world called earth is expressing its toxins. And not only itself, but its people, its <coughs> human beings. Well, also when you were, uh, when you mentioned the uh, the TARS, that's what it is. I was trying to find it. T A R uh, S E uh, earlier. I think it's the same thing, and that's basically what you just described, Miss Barbara. Um, and uh, you, uh, Pastor Richard, is for us just pretty much uh, staying the course and. Uh, when you look at it from the sea, not uh, being involved, not, I don't say being involved, but being caught up or consumed with the smaller things and just uh, staying the course and pretty much when those things need to be addressed or they're being addressed, it's just happening very easily. So you just, just uh, I guess, stay on track. Uh, uh, you know, go in your house and uh, pray, which I don't have to explain what, uh, what like what Nick said about uh, house and prayer, about what that really is, but just do that. 
Hmm. Because when, when um, what the 25th chapter of Matthew expresses uh, when when you this time comes, uh, or when you recognize that you came to the mountains. Mm -hmm. In other words, um, you you make haste to get to uh, elevated place in in, in terms of um, spiritual, um, uh -huh. not fleeing to a mountain. It, it, I was listening to um, the Mormon statement. He said, um, "The people who espouse the evangelicals should love, um, and, and the Catholics too, for a matter of fact, should love, um, should have fallen in love with what the was getting ready to do with Syria." Because they always expose them that when the end time comes, there's going to be a war in the Middle East. <laughs> so they ought to be happy about it. They, it's almost like they, 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 they want it to happen, but they're scared to go happen. <laughs> but but on, on, a, on a more serious note, um, it is actually talking about um, you being in a and, and a, a greater state of awareness of who you are as opposed to um, staying um, connected to this earth. I, I think one of the other things that I, I think we, we need to address here also is, is that um, when you, if you believe, you believe. You can't vacillate. You cannot, you cannot believe today and doubt tomorrow. You cannot hold on to it this minute because of what you see and let it go because of what you don't see or have or don't have. Um, people who are in those positions, I'm, I'm sorry, people who, who, who we talk about, um, um, and I don't mean we just in this room to my, at large, about how it doesn't seem as though the greedy or the vicious are ever uh, called into account. They always seem to succeed. They always seem to move forward. But what we what we lose in sight of one thing is that the the universe is not on that side. We are. The universe is not giving life to that. We are. Every time that that uh, we talk about man, if I were rich, this is what I would do. What you're saying, you what you're giving life to greed. If I had the money that they have, this is what I would do. You're giving life to greed, and you're drawing that energy to you, that, neck, that dark energy towards you that got them where they are. And when you do that, it does not have to manifest in the same way that it does with them. It manifests at your weakest point. So you see it differently. So, so it also, when we say things like that, what we're also saying is that the Creator did not know what he was doing when he allowed things to flow in our direction and he didn't give us enough to do what needs to be done. It's a perception of that. Wow. Yeah. So, so, so we are actually giving life um, to the lack, it's the, that perception itself, and as a result, we, we're experiencing it. So, but, and also the people who are moving in that direction of greed and loss of, uh, and viciousness, uh, they don't, they don't vacillate. You know, the, the idea of, of comes to us, like, if I had, that we need to, we need to stay focused and and, and don't don't go there with that idea. But the idea of helping other people come to them and be like, oh no, I ain't uh -uh. this is mine, let them get theirs. You, you see? Mm -hmm. So they're not doubting where they're headed. We don't want who doubt where we go. They they know what they want. Yeah. And I remember uh, when when the uh, Wall Street thing was uh, Occupy Wall Street, I remember seeing a sign in one of the windows on Wall Street said we are the one percent in the in a small capsule and proud of it. You, you see? Yeah. So, so they're not ashamed, neither are they doubting what their, what, not their desires and the trajectory that, they're, that they have been embarked upon, right? But we are. We are, we are up and down with it. And again, I'm not just talking about we in this room, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the, at large, right? We cannot be up and down with it, be very cognizant of, of what we say, how we say things. Uh, the, the idea, man, if, if I hit the lottery, well, first of all, you got to play it. Uh, you know, uh, if, if I, if I, if I, if I, you know? It, nine times out of ten, when we talk about if I had, if I could, if I would, that you know, kind of thing, we are, nine times out of ten, we're saying that the creator uh, is inefficient 
in, in the distribution of our strength and abilities. Mm. I was, um, and just to add to what you just said, I was reading uh, or watching something online uh, by one of the guys I like to follow. Um, and he was talking about a bunch of words we should never use again, and phrases we should never say again. And they include things like, if I had, I wish I could, da 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 da, da all that stuff. Could have, should have. Yeah. taught that one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those phrases are blasphemous. Mm. They are, mm. indeed. Wow. They are indeed. And, and also, um, it, they are diametric to what we profess to believe. If you believe that you are who you say you are, how can there be an if or would have come to show? How can there ever be a doubt if you say if you believe who you say you are? How can there ever be an experience of defeat when everything that is came from you? <coughs> That's the image that you are, isn't it? Yeah. So, so how how you know how can there be doubt uh, when when um, that's the essence of your being. Well, the entire concept that you mentioned a little while ago about the mountain of being moved is just realizing that the mountain doesn't even exist. Mm. Only oh. oh. in your mind. I want to go. Only in your mind. Oh yes, yes, yes. The concept. That's the. That's the. There is no spoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you had made a statement earlier about accepting the energy behind. Um, oh yeah, I got you. What you, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And I can you go back over that again? Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you why I said that. Okay. Can we go over first, yes, sir, okay. please? Okay. Um, what I was saying is that um, that's covetous, being covetous. Okay. And when you covet something, you don't necessarily get the object. Okay. But you get the energy that got the, that acquired the object. Okay. The no, energy no. flow, what you're doing, uh -huh. you're desiring the object, right? Uh -huh. The energy, you're attracting that energy because of your desire. Okay. The energy does not have to manifest in the same way that it does being attached to the object that you desire. Okay. It manifests at your weakest point, uh, point right? Uh -huh. So it might manifest with you as a sickness of a job or some some seeking lack okay it's going to manifest in that area um and and but even if uh, i mean i'm sorry even when it does when it does come you don't know what's going on in that household who who has that that the energy that came with that so you're also attracting that so my question to you is that or to everybody <coughs> is, is that why abraham did not accept the gift from the king is the is that concept no. still the same? That's a different concept. Okay. See, I'm talking about desire. Okay. Right? Um, the the king offered to Abraham. Okay. See? And and that's a difference than being covetous. The reason he did not accept it is because he said the, his statement was. I would not accept it, even a shoestring from you mm -hmm. um, unless you say that you made me rich. Right. In, in other words, the source of my wealth comes from your, uh, no, the source of my wealth comes from the grave. But I looked at the energy part, so, but it's still different. But it's different in that he, he would be accepting the energy. If you accept a book from me, mm -hmm. you're accepting the energy that goes with it. So that's why I've heard that we shouldn't accept pamphlets or anything from different it, it doesn't matter religions because of the energy behind it it doesn't matter it depends on you okay it depends on how strong you are it depends on what you believe you are okay you know you, you see where I'm coming from all right it, it's like the guy who gave me a pamphlet in the hospital that time said I need to be saved and, and um, I began to question him about it he didn't know what the pamphlet meant <laughs> you see yeah so, so, okay. but if I had been, if it had been someone else who had no concept of that, then that, that means their energy flows are different. Gotcha. Got it? Mm -hmm. So it has to do a little bit also then with your intent behind why you're accepting something from someone. Yes. See, okay. you can't ever get away from intent. Okay, why do, no why do you do what you do? And, and if anything that you do for 
you is selfish. Uh, when I eat, it's to maintain a body so I can stay in this realm and do what I do in terms of seeking to bring light to mankind. If it were, if, if it were not for that, I don't even want to be here. That's what I'm here for. I know the reason I'm in this, in this universe. Now, you may be in the universe to do what you're doing right now. In addition to a couple of other things, maybe. But, but you see where I'm coming from? I guess it kind of hit me hard when you, like food, when you're talking about, yeah. when you said about eating. Um, you know, grew up saying grace over it. Now, my grace is very different than before. But even now, it hit me like, well, them times when I'm just eating just the stuff, stuff in my face, I can see how that could be harmful and deadly to my well, body. Yeah, and, and it usually is. You know, by virtue of obesity. Yeah. Yeah, it usually is. And, you know, saying your grace is re reshaping the energy that went into the production of the food. And with my signs over where they are, boy, you better say six graces. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I heard this thing that, that, that Monsanto offered 45 tons of seed to Haiti and the 10,000 Haitian farmers went in the street and said, if you send it, we'll burn it. We don't want your seed. Because they, they were going to give it to them this year to plant next year, then they had to buy it. And all their seed gone. Because Monsanto's seed is resistant to, to um, a, a Roundup. And Roundup is what they sell. So they give you the seed that resists the Roundup. Roundup is what they sell. So you got to buy the Roundup to grow the seed. But the seed that they that were given to Haiti, the nutrients in the soil didn't support it. So now they got to buy to get the synthetic fertilizer to, to raise the food. Mm -hmm. Wow. And th that they produce. And then on top of that, um, they fight all these battles to keep people from, to keep companies from having to put labels on food. They're currently are fighting the battle in the state of Washington because they don't want to label what's in their food. If it's good for you, you're in a problem. So, so when I say, or I'm, I'm very, very serious when I talk about, you, 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 know, you better change that energy because of what it has the, um, uh, um, what, the ability to do. Now what happened here? Um, we we talked about a, a plethora of things, like a whole host of stuff, and all of it is the same stuff. All of it is darkness. All of it is confusion. I listened to this guy talk uh, defend Monsanto. He said that um, um, we have been altering foods forever. The air cone that the Native American had was like a couple of inches long and has grown since. It, it, because of um, engineering, and, and that's not true. It's, it's because of choosing the better, the stronger seed, healthier seed, and expand that as opposed to gene splicing. Nobody splices genes to get that done. But if you don't understand the concepts, it's easy to confuse you, and and that's what's happened. So so we so, so the same confusion that's presented by Monsanto with the, with the um, energy that, I mean, with the seeds, it's, it's the same confusion that's presented with the, um, the economy, with the derivatives, et cetera, that most people don't understand that are derived in them, but a piece of paper with some words and some numbers on it that, that's used to suck your money out your pocket. In other words, it's a paper vacuum uh, that those folk up there where that boy go to school at brought into being. <laughs> <laughs> And, 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 and he there bring us a light, hopefully, to change all of that. And, but that energy is no different than that. The Monsanto energy, the, the economics, the health, uh, the natural disasters, all of it is the same thing. It just manifests different. All of it is the same. Well, Pastor, you know, I went to Walmart last night. Okay. And you want to see some sad people? I mean, I just noticed this last night. 
The employees of, of the customers. The employees of Walmart. Both. <laughs> Those Both. are, Both. It's, yeah. they look so sad and pitiful. And I'm like, <clears throat> it's like, it's sad. Even, of course. What time did you go? It was about 7.30, 8 o'clock. That was my time. they real sad, man. That's the word you usually dang. That's the word you usually dang. Yeah, it's it's so. I mean, it's like and I look at one lady face. You like that is bad. Look on her face and her husband with her. He he on the buggy like this. And I'm like, it's like we collectively. It's like zombies. Sure. Well, you see that? And it's sad. Did you look at your internet on the Yahoo thing today? No. The, the picture of what's her name? Walmart, the richest woman in America. For the 81 billion or whatever it is, they were showing you one of her homes. No, I haven't got on the internet yet, but. No, and, and that's the thing. Why did they do that, Rich? Why, why did they put that out there? Which? That's the stick and carrot thing, you know? The picture. To make you want more. Yeah. You know, it, to some people, you know, like, well, it's irritating to a degree. But to other people, like, man, I can do that. Oh, you can. <laughs> You're a lady in here, did I hold up? Yeah. yeah, can you work no way? Actually, actually, there was a very good article about the family and how little they pay in tax because of what they've been able to maneuver with the monies. That was more interesting than looking at a house. Right. To me, to me anyway. Yeah. And, I'm going to read it now. It's because of what she did. Because actually. of that. Yeah. And, 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 I mean, when you think about the people who are perpetuating this energy, this dark energy that we are talking about, think about them. <clears throat> Overwhelmingly, they are spoiled brats who can no longer bully people on the playground, so they do it on a broader scale. They inherit the coat brothers, they make no money, they inherit it from their daddy. You, you see, they, they, they're spoiled kids, the, the Walmart kids inherit it. They're spoiled kids who are bullying on a broader scale now because they have the money to do it. Mm. I mean, why would, why, what, what adverse effect does it have on a Walmart family or, or a Coke Brothers family for someone to receive food stamps or to increase the minimum wage? What adverse effect does it have on none? None. None whatsoever. It does not affect the bottom line. Two things about that. One, um, when, 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 you, when you look at the idea of uh, a McDonald's that pays minimum wage, a Big Mac in New York costs the same thing as a Big Mac in San Francisco. <clears throat> right? The Big Mac, uh, but the wage in New York is like $7.50 an hour, and in San Francisco is ten fifty. But they say the reason that the product would go up if they raise the minimum wage. That's not true. The wage is tied to the overhead from property as opposed to the product that they sell. That's, that's where the overhead, the, the, that's why they can charge the same thing in San Francisco as they charge in New York, because property values are comparable. And, and, and the, the, the um, I, I lost my thought, go ahead, it'll come back. I, I, I look forward to the day, who's the guy, Papa John, who said that yeah. if you do the Obama, this Affordable Care, I'm tired of calling it Obamacare. Yeah. It's, we really should stop reinforcing all the stuff that's associated with that title. I think. It's the Affordable Care Act. It's meant for everyone. It's not his socialist whatever. I mean, it's been twisted that way. But anyway, if, if that was the guy, Papa John just said, if the Affordable Care Act goes through, I'm going to have to lay off people raise my prices. Yeah. Do it. Do it. And, and who's going to, whose pizza gonna, are they going to eat? Gonna eat? Yeah. Go ahead and do it, Jack. Someone else is Call the bluff. Yeah. You're going to have to sell your third house? Yeah. Do it. Come uh -huh. on. You know that's that's the thing, but <coughs> what you're what you're left doing, which is why I can't do too much of this during the day, is you're just yelling at the TV set. There's no dialogue. There's no discussion. Yeah. yeah, you're not learning this stuff to do something with it. You know what I mean? Unless somehow you just get a sense that things are wrong enough that maybe you talk with others and you just start to expand a sort of awareness and. All of that, but otherwise you're just. Uh, I think it's all all part of of divide and conquer. It's just helping you feel more isolated, more 
Hopeless, I guess, could be the word. So now you have to go and get more of that toxin out of your system. Well, I, I think that also it is done because of settings like this. So all of us can be on the same page and seeing what we're dealing with. Um, this whole discussion started with um, Elna asking for clarity, understanding about you know ideas, and uh, and I, I think that those are the kinds of questions that pull the answers that bring um, balance to our understanding. And when we're on the same page about understanding, now we can direct the energy the same way. Um, Nick wrote this thing about. Um, Martin Luther King's thing being divinely inspired, but at the same time, it was dealt with from the, in a political arena, and the divinity, of, he carried as far as he was supposed to when he began to expand into the, uh, talking about um, the injustices of mankind at large, that was when he was taken off the public stage. And it's up to us to pick up the ball and carry it further. Well, he could not have done that if he did not understand the injustices and sat around in rooms and, 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 and talked about uh, what was, you know, what was, what the injustices were and how they presented themselves, now we get to put the people together and we deal with it. So we're doing it from a spiritual perspective, picking up that ball and, and, and seeing these same injustices being perpetrated, but now dealing with them from a, a spiritual um, perspective as opposed to a march. Because I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, when Nick writes that, um, there will never be a, a, another um, a, a, a movement like that of Martin Luther King. It's not going to happen because the, the approach has to be different. It has to be from the perspective of, the, uh, of energy. Uh, and I was looking at um, the, the History Channel talking about um, the, how, how um, Energy is the same, but yet it manifests in different ways. And I won't get into some of the technical stuff that they were talking about, but it dawned on me immediately uh, how, how far off base most of mankind is in terms of understanding how powerful it is in terms of mankind. How, how you know, the, uh, the, the most powerful entity on earth is, is, is um, some of them know who they are. If you truly realize who you are and live that, you, that's the most powerful entity on earth and the most feared. Obviously so because of the confusion that's being projected. So I, I, I think we look at it for, for reasons of, of bringing each other to a place of understanding and balance. So uh, I think uh, what we as a group and everybody who's right here and everybody who follows this stuff um, is I'm realizing that what we have to start doing is uh, uh, actively pursuing the, the wisdom um, of which we are now gaining some understanding of. And that means we have to do and we have to be what it is that we've said that we are. Because that's the only thing that connects, or that's the bridge across <laughs> troubled waters. <coughs> because everything else is a distraction. Yeah. Um, and when we, oh, can everybody still hear me? Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. I uh, sound is something. Anyway, uh, when we uh, learn to employ what we've been talking about in our daily experience uh, for the purpose of gaining wisdom, which is itself experience, um, then we will not just be talking about it, we will be actively creating the very things that we use have talked about. Um, so like last time when I was here and I said some of your homework was <laughs> the next time you're in a position where you feel anxious or nervous, whatever, uh, would be to just breathe 
and remember who you are, and regardless of what you think the outcome may or may not be, know that fear and anxiety is not a part of it. It has no place in your response to anything in terms of our ability to actually create something. It is a, a little knot of unused energy that does nothing except create chaos and optical experience. And by extension, in the experiences of the world around us. So, what Jesus would have done, well, what Yeshua would have done, is sort of everybody around him that he knew needed to understand this, he would have been like, tell me everything you are afraid of. We're going to do one of those things every single day until the list is done. <laughs> I, uh, and I mean, like, tell me what you're afraid of, because before you can do this, before you can really be what you are, you have to purge that from your system. So we are all in the process of doing that. And I don't think it's any coincidence that I'm not working at the Martin Luther King Library, and, uh, I felt like I, wanted, I needed to write that because I'm now, I hate confrontation, I'm not confrontational. Every single day in this library, I get put in positions that make me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yesterday these two men almost got into a fight and so we had to call security. I was the closest one to them. And the smallest. I probably did. <laughs> but it's whatever. Like it doesn't it doesn't matter. I remember watching I forget what it was. It was some documentary about gang violence in uh, in in California. And this like teenage girl was talking saying something to the camera. Um, and she was, one of the things she said that I probably will not forget, and she was like, everybody's like, oh, it's so dangerous. Everybody who doesn't come from here is like, oh, it's so dangerous all the time. She was like, it's not dangerous, it's life. Hmm. Hmm. And you do with it what you choose to. It could still be dangerous, but that doesn't, like, that doesn't factor into your willfulness to live life. And especially since we are here to understand what life even is, then more and more it's coming into my uh, understanding that we have to do that. Be conscious of our own ability to allow our higher self to influence this situation instead of getting tangled up in the knots of energy that we allow to exist in us. And that's exactly what I just said. Anxiety, fear, all of that is just a, it's just bouncing off walls inside of you doing nothing except creating turmoil in your own experience, which prevents you from being able to create an experience that wouldn't even, that would relieve all turmoil. But the truth is, we don't have to try to change those internal circumstances because that's not true concerning where those experiences come from. Like in the thing I wrote about Martin Luther King, which I, I guess I, I should send to everybody, or it's on my Facebook book, I want something if you're interested in reading it. Um, the truth is, the source of our fear has nothing to do with the external circumstance. And when we realize that in the situation that causes that we believe causes us to be afraid, then we can deal with the actual source of fear which is in us. It is us. It's, it's nothing to do with what's outside. And you don't even have to deal with this on a spiritual level to, to understand that. 
even though, well, in truth, everything is spiritual. <laughs> but if you deal with it on a psychological level, it doesn't matter what you see. If it causes fear, it started in you. Yeah. Something way in the back of your subconscious was like, oh crap. And then it's, the ball just got rolling. You said and that. It has nothing to do with whatever it is that's outside of you. You said that fear is the animal in us that's not yet tamed. And it responds out of, um, I mean, and it reacts instead of responds. Yep. In one of your earlier. So, so that's what you're saying. Until we come face to face with the animal in us that's not yet tame, then anything, whether it's external or internal, can give us and cause us to be fearful. Until yeah. we face ourselves in that mirror in us and acknowledge that we are more than that animalistic uh, nature, that we are greater than that animalistic nature. Yep. So like Robin Thicke said, we need to domesticate it. <laughs> uh, no, don't, just... don't make a wolf into a, a dachshund, okay? Um, a wolf is a wolf. I think the only thing I would say to what Barb was saying is I still hold on to this idea that in and of itself, fear is nothing more than an alert. And if you allow yourself to be confused or overwhelmed by it, then now you're with this whole thing of who's in control of what. So if you talk about taming, it's, it's maybe recognizing and making peace with that aspect of your nature, but it, it has a useful role. I don't think you would mean to exclude that. It's not denying it. <coughs> The actual role of fear is to show you what in yourself, uh, right. the God that you are has yet to master. Mm -hmm. That and, and 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 the whole idea of it, the animal aspects were put there in the beginning. When you look at, and this man, it's not good for this man to be alone, and then he begins to bring the animals for the Adam to name, mm -hmm. and then he does the help me. Mm -hmm. It appears as though um, between the masculine and the feminine nature is the animal nature that has to be brought under control before you can move beyond your present nature. And that is what brings us to the place of being Elohim, of fulfilling the image that we were created to be. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So uh, I was, um, last week, um, uh, George's wife came and um, for a funeral and, uh, and, and um, well, along with uh, Millicent and my uh, stepmom. Anyway, um, we were talking on our way back to the airport and she made a statement to me and um, I, I doubt that she even remember making it. Maybe she does. Uh, we were talking about, we were in a discussion about the idea that everyone's just not going to buy into, accept, believe what we teach. And she said to me, um, she believes that we as a group are here in this earth uh, for the express purpose of bringing understanding to the scriptures for the whole of mankind. So all, all don't have to believe it, all don't have to accept it, but it's imperative that we do what we do. Of course, some of those are my words, but that's the gist of, what, of the statement she was making. Mm -hmm. And from that, I gleaned that what she was saying uh, pretty much is that uh, we are the bridge uh, that that um, binds two worlds together, across which mankind must uh, walk in order to get to where it needs to be. Say it again, one more time, say it, please. That part, the, the so last part. part. Mm -hmm. That we are the bridge uh, that uh, between this world and the other world, across which mankind must walk in order to um, uh, get to where it needs to be in terms of um, uh, the state of being that it was created to be. And I truly don't, I, I really don't believe that everyone has to get it. I, I really don't. Um, if, if you look at whether it be, um, I hope your prophets or any other, there's always a small group of people in terms of uh, the, uh, what we uh, sometimes lump together as uh, the priestly 
the priestly sect uh, who actually pursues the whole concept of truth. It's not the whole, it's not the whole village, it's not the whole city, town, it's not all the people. It is not necessary. Yeshua did not have the whole of Jerusalem. Yeshua had this, this small band of people, but at the same time, look, we're still talking about, look at the transformation that took place up to a point. Um, and, and that's exactly what happened. He took it to a point. And, and we have to deal with that. Uh, the, uh, I was looking at um, this thing we was talking about, um, the Vatican being almost 2,000 years old in terms of um, the, uh, the Catholic religion, rather, being almost 2,000 years old. And, um, and they were talking about how um, in, the, in those uh, the dungeons of it, all the documents that they have. And, and, and when they began to talk about the documents that, were, that are there, I began to see something. That's a pattern. Um, everything that has transpired in this world um, since the inception of that religion, everything that's negative, they have impacted. They've been a part of it. From the Crusades all the way to World War II with the Nazis, the, the, you know, the hiding of the Nazis. I mean, just stuff that they have been involved with, even the Civil War. Um, Jefferson Davis was recognized as the president of the Confederacy by the Pope, mm -hmm. by virtue of a letter that they sent to them. Mm -hmm. so, they're, so, so, you know, they have been playing both sides against the middle with the side that they really support is the dark side. Mm -hmm. but, but playing off the public side is the side of, of light. And, and when this guy made the statement that, um, that, um, that next to the government, the Catholics provide more social services than any other organization <coughs> in this country. Well, that's, that, that's, that does not come without price or purpose. Uh, purpose to look, to appear to be like, and price that's paid, if you buy into it, is confusion, mm -hmm. bondage. That's the what the, the back end of the Catholic Church is doing. It's part of a, a, a power grab. Of course. Um, so in these uh, times that appear to be crazy, um, they appear to be something you can take refuge in, even though they are not the reality. That is anti-Christ. <laughs> Yeah, it is. And when you could pick up, when you look at it, why be, why do more social program in this country uh, than anyone else other than the government when there are countries in greater need of those social programs than we are? You know, South America, where they're the, the strongest, mm -hmm. they're also the poorest. And you find countries where they dominate, these countries are usually the people, the indigenous mm -hmm. people are usually the poorest. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, we, we don't look at that from that perspective. And, and I want to, um, to say that, though, that we, this morning I noticed that there have been uh, a, a, a more moments of silence in between conversation than before, than any other time. And, and it dawned on me how we as human, as being humans, uh, are intimidated by silence when we're in a group, especially when the discussion is supposed to be going on. You, the intimidation factor is like somebody needs to say something, not necessarily. It's an, it's an absorption or a pondering thing, I guess. Like it. So, uh, um, you're absorbing what you said. <laughs> yeah. Could be the ozone in the weather too. So. so there is a in 
not, not to add too much onto it, but something in hermetic philosophy. Um, and it's called hermetic philosophy, but the word philosophy does not mean the same thing that it did back then. Uh, uh, called the, well, the principle of polarity. And it's just one of the things that they um, break down in terms of how reality is built. So the principle of polarity uh, basically means that everything has its blood opposite within the space of creation. Um, but the reason that there are opposites um, is so that you can choose which path do you wish to go down? But, and well, it, it relates to why there's so much inequality. And I was just reading something out like inequality now in America is around the same that was in the 1920s. Um, in terms of, yeah, how much <laughs> real net worth the wealthy have gained versus how, how much real net worth. Uh, the middle class and the poor have gained, which is basically not. <laughs> and of course, we all know what happened at the end of 1929. Or at the end of the 20s. Everything shut down. Um, I would not be surprised if something like that is going to kind of happen again. Um, but the point was polarities can be reversed instantly. Um, Is the earth getting ready to do that again? Is that what they said? Yeah. They, let's say you you choose a path uh, and putting it in simple terms of good and evil, and you choose a, an evil path. And for whatever reason, you're just like, all right, I'm going to become the most evil person that exists on the face of the earth, you know, just because that's what I choose. It doesn't matter because at any point during that journey, you can be reversed and be all the way at the other end of the spectrum, like that. And the same is true if you go in the positive direction. It's just the energy that has to be input into wherever you are at that moment has to be great enough to do that. Um, but it doesn't take that much. And I'm sorry if I'm making this a bit confusing, but like, I want to relate this to our, our own experience of anxiety, our own experience of, you know, whatever we experience as negative, what we see all these things happen. All these negative things we see as happening are in part the result of increasing in polarity, increasing inequality, increasing extremes like we've seen, or like Pastor Richard said, anyway. So, however extreme it gets for whoever is on the other opposite sides of the spectrum, all of that flips in an instant relatively. But it flips when we recognize that even if we are in the negative part or the lower end of the extreme, all of this is an illusion anyway. And the darkness that we see, or that we feel we are experiencing, is just empty space waiting to be filled with light. So if we get it correct, then the space that we exist in, that once appeared negative, we fill with the light that we are connect to and that we are. And then, relatively speaking, the other end of the spectrum that look positive and all that becomes nothing. So if the wealthy are essentially attempting to increase the inequality gap, their fate is sealed. Mm. And it, it has to be, because this is it's just physics. And what I mean by that is when we begin to wake up, and we are on a global scale, um, we don't chase that carrot on stick anymore. And we begin to create the conditions 
that allow us to do what it is that we truly desire. And the desires that we thought we wanted, which were actually given to us by those who knew they could manipulate them and eventually benefit from them, uh, no longer have any meaning. So relative to the light that we create in the space that appears to be dark, what once appeared to be the light becomes the dark darkness. And that's how the first will be last and the last will be first. If you can, if you can create the things that you need, why bother chasing an image that someone else created? Essentially, so they can manipulate. You. Based on what you said about choosing pathways, right? Mm -hmm. In order for you to, uh, for us to be light, be aware of that light, we have to travel the pathway of evil. It's mandatory. If we don't travel the pathway of evil, I mean, I'm sorry, travel the pathway of evil or unrightness. By virtue of doing that, you have to determine your intent. Why are you doing it? If you travel this path of evil for the purposes of selfishness, of bringing stuff to you, or for self-gain, then you become that unrightness. But if you travel that pathway of evil in order to bring rightness or light to the darkness, uh, then you are moving in the direction, not only becoming more and more aware of who you are, but being reflective of the image in which you were created. Can you see that? Yeah. And, so, well, just so, to clarify, traveling the path of evil doesn't mean do it. It means, it means go to where it is. Right. Like going to darkness. To, in order that it's not dark anymore. Uh, right now, as we talk about these things that um, adverse to uh, the nature of Elohim and not the nature of man, of course, because they are germane to man, but not the, as we talk about them, we're traveling the path of evil. We are, we are on this journey of evilness. We are looking for the unrightness so that we can make it right, or we're looking for the darkness so that we can bring it to the light. It, it is, it is, um, it, 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 one of the things that helped me, uh, that struck me about it, is, is the polar shift of it. We think that we're, tra we're supposed to travel the path of where righteousness, I mean goodness, right? We, the journey of good is what we, but it's just the opposite of that. I mean, you don't, why would you need a flashlight in here right now? Because you don't see us. But other than that, you don't need one. I mean, you don't need, so, so, you, so you, only, you need the light. When you go to a dark place, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Where is it, Bob? You got your little. He does. Yeah. <laughs> you got your little. Could it be that the pathway of righteousness is that of exposing dark things? Absolutely. It has to be. The light and truth, light which is true. Yeah. Yeah. Let me throw something there. <coughs> the reason we haven't had physical pole shift on planet Earth is because we are. So again, that the the reason that we have not had a physical pole shift on it, even though of course we're due for one, just like we're due for an asteroid to hit us any day, a super volcano to go off, all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason we haven't had that is because we are the spiritual pole shift. If we were not, this would be destroyed. Not by some outside force. It would be because we didn't hold it in balance. Mm. But the universe wants to bring it back to a state of balance. Because that's what it is. It does that. And we resist it, then we are on the wrong side of the polarity. And we get flipped. 
and everything that we had gets destroyed because if we operate a selfish ego, um, that's what happens. <clears throat> that's what um, the whole concept of 2012 was about. Uh, being that balance so that the shift didn't take place. Uh, you, you know, I um, I'm beginning to notice that I'm experiencing or receiving less and less resistance to the stuff that I say or teach. In, 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 I'm not talking about the young coaches. I'm talking about at large for other people who are in other settings. I found that there is less and less resistance and that there is, um, it, it takes less time for, for, for the people I'm talking to or teaching on Monday night to grasp it than what it was in the past. Um, <clears throat> I was, um, the guy who goes to my, my Monday night class, Howard, was out of town, the uh, guy who was a, the uh, Caucasian preacher who my class on Monday night, he's out of town doing some work. And he called me uh, for some CDs and he said to me, uh, Brother James, um, I uh, was listening to the CDs. And he said that this lady began to talk to him about her being fed up with church. And she proceeded to say that, um, she had been looking at studying Hebrew and Greek, and that's what moved in that direction. And he gave her the CD and said, I think you might need to listen to this. And, and it dawned on me that, um, that there are sparks who are in search of themselves and don't know that they're in search of themselves in different places. And that is one of the reasons I believe it is becoming easier uh, uh, for, for, for people to accept it or uh, the reason that I'm experiencing less resistance to the things that I say um, than, than what it once was. Because um, I had to keep reassuring myself that I wasn't crazy at one time. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> But it doesn't happen like that anymore. It, it doesn't. Um, oh, but I think, I think because that's the, just to use use this term exceptionalism, you know, like the American exceptionalism, it applies to anything. Yeah. And and all of those things now have that were solid before have now opened in their spaces, and people are in the spaces, and and there's there's all kinds of suggestions of other things. So I think they are more open to what limitations were part of that rigid view. And so they, the natural thing is to look for something to have more meaning, to new meaning. So that's all that possibility is there. <coughs> I, I can see that. But there's, and that's, that's a double-edged sword, of course, because yes. you can go two directions. You're always sort of a dichotomy kind of mentality. You go one or two directions. Usually it's a mixture. There's always that third thing. Actually, a fourth one. You don't do anything. You're frozen. Or you, it's usually a mixture of something. It's not this path versus that path. So it's, it's some newer, maybe, confusion. But it may be the, the percentages are a little different, if you want to think of it that way between what's clear and what's confusing, but still, I think that's because people have just, there's just so much dialogue around you that those old simple things don't add up anymore. One Aramaic definition of truth is that it opens the circle so that we can leave and walk in the light of desire, but that means exactly what you said. If the circle is open, there are so many other potentials out there sure. other than the constructed rigid um, box that we had created for ourselves. So, so that's exactly what you just said. Because truth is out there, it's opening up that rigidity and exposing people uh, to other potentials. And, and, and ultimately, the potential 
of who they already are, that knowledge of the potential of who they are, who they really are. I, I, um, I, 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 I Go ahead, Richard. I was going to say, so to me, what's interesting, and I, I suppose the laws of physics and the universe, everything reinforced um, why the tendency to, for the rigidity. You know what I'm saying? We, we said let's, let's, let's say the whole, the whole of existence is a pulse, a pulsating, heart-like phenomenon. So there have been moments when things open up, and people see things a different way to say it that way. And then slowly they close again, and people are now fixed in that new perspective. And if you look at the history of religion and things like that, it seems like it goes through that thing, right? Social movements, maybe stuff like that. So what's the? How do you, how do you overcome that propensity or that tendency to say, okay, this is it. This is what I'm going to rest on, and suddenly that gets rigid, and then it starts to lose because by definition. If it's rigid, it's, and then uh, think of all the words you want to think of that go with the rigidness, right? When well, life I, itself isn't, it's, it's more plastic in that sense, it's more flexible, it's adaptive, it's, it's the whole process, is to be open and, right? I, I think the sense of a rigidity from a spiritual perspective is something that's malleable, but, but um, more, more rigid than truth, than, than, um, than the truth itself is. And what I mean by that is that the truth flows and, uh, and confusion doesn't. It's like when I was little, I remember um, my grandma was saying that uh, you don't have to remember the truth, but you got to remember a lot. Because the truth always is what it is. It's always moving. Um, when, I, when I look at, when I think about uh, the rigidity of it all, I, I think more of how it, it, how we slow down if we were steam, meaning our existence in terms of what we're human now, but we were steam, and um, as we cooled, we became um, water. We returned to the you know the, the boiling water, and then to the point where we became ice. Uh, understanding the molecules, all of them move, are constantly moving anyway. I think that's what we are. And, and now we are making an attempt to um, go from ice to water to boiling water to steam again. You, you, you see? So that kind of rigidity I see. I don't see um, rigidity that's inflexible at all. Because if there's inflexibility in, in, in being rigid, then how did we change? If, if, if there's inflexibility in being rigid. So that's it. That's it. That's it. So you're saying we all need to be shapeshifters. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I just said that it seems to me there's a, there's a propensity, right? <laughs> and then I'm not saying they're not true <coughs> techniques, whatever you want to call it, to help minimize that. And, and what comes to mind is even something on a physical plane like yoga and whatnot. I mean, you don't have to be old and stiff. <laughs> There's plenty of stuff out there to help you. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Those two don't go together. Huh? <laughs> well, don't that, have to. Is that joke? Have to be there. Is that joke? Like the older you get, the yeah. Why am I soft in the wrong place? It's hard. Yeah, no, like but, but you know what I mean. And yet, and yet, if you just sit there, etc. Or if you're living in a community that says that you're supposed to be that when you get older, then you you can give into that sort of thing. So there's, just, but that's the quote unquote. I guess that's the sort of struggle of it, maybe until you get enough of that habit, for one of a better term, into you, that that doesn't want that, that seeks to avoid it. When you sense it's coming, you you do some exercise, whatever. So, but it does seem like. And, and there have been plenty of people that have had epiphanies and things like that. And then, as we've discussed in here, one way or another over 20 years, 10 years, how long we've we been here, you get a, you get a, let's say, an awareness. And then you go out and instead of nurturing it and just, you, you try to characterize it. You try to label it. You try to describe it. <coughs> and then you're a year away from forming a church and now you're wearing, you know, wow. You just can't. You, you you rigidify it, you box it, you make it 
Jedi, you know what I mean? whatever the word. <laughs> you just don't let it be, kind of thing. Keep picking it. Go, go with the flow. We go with the flow to a point, and then you got to stop, and you got to, uh, and now you stop. Now you're not flowing down the river anymore. Now you're, you know. I um. A couple of weeks ago, I I, I talked about some things I experienced at, at one night, and and ended up writing. Last week, I experienced something else. I didn't write it. And let me uh, preempt it by saying these are the reason I, I know deeply that there is a huge shift that um, not only has taken place but continues to take place and, and um, is going to become more visible in terms of manifestation in a very short period of time. Um, I, um, the experience I had was um, seeing this person, and when I saw this person, this person um, was one of was a nemesis to me, but um, when I saw them, they were in this earth, or uh, should I say they were dead and they were not dead, and they handed me um, this sum of money. And then I was in this place of, of light, and I experienced, and I can actually feel it. Even when I say feel it, I'm not just talking about while I'm in the other world. It's like I could even feel in my body, even though I was in this visionary state, that I was, there was an infusion of understanding of light taking place, of which I was not able to, to see clearly, because it wasn't time. And when I, when I woke up, I came from that visionary state. I remembered these things that I'm telling you, but I had no inkling as to uh, what it meant. So I did what I usually do. If I don't know what something is, I let it go. And just let it be what it was supposed to be. So, uh, without me even thinking about it anymore, uh, it, it, in a flash, I saw it. And what I saw, uh, was this person who was an image um, while I was there at Mount Calvary. Um, they owed me money, a lot, a lot of sum of money. And I knew they weren't going to give that, they weren't going to pay me, so we settled on an amount. And this person was an image between, behind them, not doing it at all. So they never did it. And I went, when I got home um, from Mount Calvary, when they refused to do it, I heard this voice say, um, don't release them from that, and I did. And after this experience I had the other night, uh, I was told to release them, and I did. And, and um, the other thing that I saw about this person was them being dead, or um, them living and being dead, was I could make that choice. I could make that choice when they would never die. Mm -hmm. And I began to understand that holding on to that would have uh, ended with this person dying in darkness. But letting it go uh, gave them opportunity uh, to, um, to, uh, to uh, be enlightened prior to their transition. So, I, I say it all that to, uh, to say, as I, I spoke earlier, I know that there was a major shift taking place. And, 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 and um, the manifestation of it appears to be the, the things that we described earlier in terms of the economics, wealth, etc. But I think it's, it's going to, the, the veil is about to be pulled off, uh, the covering is, is going away. And I think what we're going to see, the shift is not going to be in, in the area of economics, et cetera, but it's going to be in the area of religious searches. That's what I, I really believe that that's what it's going to be. And, and I believe that going back to the, the beginning of today, I believe that maybe, just maybe, and someone else may want to uh, speak on this, maybe that the, the tarp is being, it, there's an attempt to hold the tarp 
over this revelation that's about to take place by virtue of saying things like, um, maybe homosexuality is not so bad. We don't need to be upset with homosexuality. We don't need to be upset with abortions. So it's an attempt to hold the chart to keep things from being revealed. So if you can be distracted to listen or to face this, then you don't really see the, the reality of the manifestation of what's really about to appear because we're looking in the wrong places. And, and, and the wrong places would be just to continue our focus on, on the, uh, the world at large as opposed to those who are, are um, pursuers in their own minds at least of, 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 of um, truth. When in actuality it's actually a religion that's going to be uncovered. Not just to us, when I say us, to my people in this room, but uncovered to the whole Because and then then people have to make a choice in which to what to pursue. Because we just had a pole shift, Nick, when we started talking about the uh, journey, choosing the journey between good and evil, right? Um, if we can if we can see ourselves um, as life, and if you can see good and evil or right and unrightness, and you are life, then you can continuously, um, you cannot continuously give life to that which is right. Because if, if that which is right, when it gets beyond right, what does it do? It rots. It rots. So you, you can't do that. You have to go to the thing that's unright in order to bring it to a place of right, right, which means that you are giving it life. The experience that I had in terms of the infusion it's the experience that others must get from us in terms of the infusion. And it's not necessarily a face-to-face -face infusion that has to take place, but it's one of desire. And, 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 and again, I think the tarp is attempting to be held down by the words that Francis have been, has been speaking. <clears throat> so. And it is, it is the thing that really drew everybody's attention back Yes. Too, because um, <coughs> Catholics in America is, oh, this new tenor. Yes. You know, so it's like it's like trying to draw more Catholics back to the fold and, 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 and distract people from, okay, well, what about the other stuff that, you know, that's going on? What about the root of Catholicism? It distracts. And the idea that most of your, your pundits or news commentators or news or journalists are Catholics. Catholics. Uh, and I don't, I don't think that's by, by coincidence, but there are no coincidences at all. And, and since the root of religion comes out of that, primarily, uh, and manipulated by that, then there's no wonder that uh, the human is not is being manipulated by the same. I was shocked when they allowed Azazero to come into America. I was really shocked, because they did everything they could to fight that. When they let what? Azazero. Oh. Is that, well, okay. They have Al Jazeera of America now. Well, watch yeah, we time. watch it. Yeah. It's better news. Uh, it's better than no, CNN. It's not better news, it's news. It's <laughs> better than <laughs> CNN. <laughs> 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 By definition. Yeah. And more varied. <laughs> and more varied. Yeah. yeah. There's no because of it. C CNN is. is it's, CIA it's comic fodder yeah. for the Disney yeah. show. I mean, it's, it's yeah, John Stewart's <laughs> I don't know, Blitz, Blitzer must be just totally living in a different world, or otherwise, anyway. Yeah. Well, I, I thought actually they'd been here for a long time. Uh, on the international, internationally you can get Al Jazeera out of New York. If you're, in, if you're on an overseas television network, yes. like we did in Africa, and it was coming out of New York. So they'd physically been here, they just maybe hadn't been allowed to sort of broadcast Directly, they bought Al Gore Oh, yeah. They bought so, Current TV. Current TV. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and that yeah. was a big fight to keep them from getting. It. Yeah. Actually, I'm a little nervous because their format is almost too like the others. But we'll see. I don't care about the format. I didn't want to hear what they got to say. Well, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll see what, what that permeates. But uh, anyway, one of my uh, one of my roommates is the one of the main. Uh, directors for Al Jazeera at their building here in DC. Oh, cool. 
And? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that and it won't it, it, the and format doesn't matter. About? It won't change because one of the builders of it in there in DC is living with light. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's constantly exposed to light. Mm. So like you want you. I hope so. <laughs> Uh, so, if it gets worse, it doesn't matter because you are who you are. Just remember that. That's it. So my technique was always like everybody's always cared about like an asteroid or a plate because about to sweep through. <laughs> You know, if you don't die, then you'll, you're you about to die in, you know, 50, 60, 70 years anyway. I don't understand. I'm serious. Why are you scared? But, no, see, the root of that is just that you're scared at all. And you still don't understand anything. So, If you don't die in the next second, it'll be the next 50, 60 years anyway. It doesn't matter. You you go across the street every day into the supermarket, and you're way more likely to get hit by a car than any of those things happening in the next thousand years. <laughs> but nobody thinks about that because they don't think about that. You know, I had um, a lady call me a week who really was not getting an understanding of seemingly what we were doing or what we were teaching, rather, and called me all excited about how she would begin to grasp who she is and the things that she's able to do and on and on and on and on. And I called someone else and was, was several people was telling them about it and all of us shot because of you know who the person is. And they were, they're not the ones who, they don't listen to CDs. They just, just a bump on the wall appearing to be. And they have been until till recently. And I, I, I think that in itself uh, is um, a, a manifestation of the uncovering. But I do wonder sometimes just from a, I don't know what word would be, psychological, psychologist point of view? Why we would be more fearful of something like that meteorite? Is it the suddenness, the unexpectedness? Is it that at that, in some sense, we can more <coughs> fairly grasp the completeness of the destruction, so to speak? But in the other slow, we're all going to die anyway thing? Yeah, it's, you know it's I mean? like a. Or is it like, a, like a plane crashes and 400 people are killed and we're all upset? Or, or purposefully? Somebody crashes a building and a plane into a building, and or all the children up in Connecticut. But the number of children that die through through neglect and everything else on the planet every day is a hundred, if not a thousand times that. So, you know what I mean? It's just it's a fascinating psychological something that it's it's not the what, it's the way we. It's it's the surface part of it. I don't know quite how to say it. It's, it's, that we get stuck on. Way Whichever yes. way gives your ego the most, the most frightened, fright, fright, fright. is the way that we fear the least. So just postponing it. Yeah, it is all it is. The it is illusion out. of I mean, time. Yeah, you know, we we fear death usually when it's imminent. That's the greatest fear expressed if it's going to be imminent. I, I remember when. Um, they were talking about some of the amendments about uh, the nuclear weapons that were stored in Charleston. And if one of them were to explode, then uh, ground zero is 200 miles around Charleston. Mm -hmm. And I remember making the statement, I'm certainly glad I'm within that 200 miles. Vaporized me yesterday. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. As, as opposed to me walking around like people are in Japan right now. Right. Yeah. Uh, sick and radioactive, radio, um, you never get that stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you see that? They had a documentary thing on, on the second yeah. generation and the abnormalities, yeah. the birth abnormalities yeah. that are still coming through. I mean, from what? From, from Hiroshima and oh, from Hiroshima. Hiroshima. Yeah. And it's just the, the people who didn't know, nobody knew and no one was telling anybody, and then they went ahead and got married, had kids, and then they're, they're worse than thalidomide babies, if you're old enough to remember yeah. the thalidomide thing. That's going to, uh, and, and what happens is going to exacerbate that. The, the nuclear meltdown. And, you know, I'm like, I guess the Japanese are saying, wow, that's everything nuclear, yeah. we have to experience it first. We're always on the wrong side of the nuclear stuff. Yeah. I guess Chernobyl, though. True. Yeah. But South Carolina's got yeah. to build more plants. Because we're exceptional. <laughs> Except for There may be a big smolding hole in the ground one day. Anyway. Well, one of the, uh, isn't one of the, one of the nuclear weapons they lost is off the coast of South Carolina or Georgia? I believe it's on the East Coast, not far away. Who lost it? Uh, the United States, I think. The lost it. It, oh, it was a, uh, it's, it's at the mouth of some river, and yeah, they, they dropped it, whatever happened to it, and just looked, never found it because the river covers it up with too much silt. Like, they, there's no way to detect it anywhere, so it's just like sitting there somewhere. Well, they were going to bury it anyway. Yeah. I'll go bury it But anyway, I, am, uh, I think I, I will stop here for this week. Okay. So, any questions or anything? No, the truth of the light that we are, the light of truth that we are. Reminds us that we see through the torn veil and we focus through our inner eye rather than on the illusions that we see through our natural eyes. Amen. Okay. Um, Skype old. Where do you go, Nick? Can we, can we Skype tomorrow? Yeah, we can do that. What time? All right. What time? Uh, I don't know. I'll be in touch tomorrow. I mean, we'll be at home waiting all day for you. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow, long way though. You talk about what time? I, I want to ask you. Actually, I don't want to say this in front of anybody, but it, it could be a learning experience. I want to ask you how you felt with those two guys that you were talking to about confronting each other in fire pits. Yeah. How did you feel? Oh, I felt like two guys confronting each other in fighting at Martin Luther King, and what you felt about that. Non because oh, you said, well, you said I, you're non-confrontational, okay. but on the other hand, you, you well, there, there are a number of things we could talk about. And then I don't know what the I, protocol it is. It was probably a little bit foolish, but I felt the resistance wanting to be in that situation uh, rise up and be strongly, so I went closer. And the closer I got, the less I felt the resistance. And then at the end of it, I, I told them security was on the way, but I was standing five feet away from them, and they broke up and went and sat down. Okay, well, hit them hard. But, all right, so you moved into the situation and overcame whatever hesitancy you had to at least offer a solution. Yeah. Right. All right. That's that courage you got from the Southeast, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what I was curious about, well, never mind. That's our conversation. Oh, 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 just the, 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 the three years that you did say. And don't misunderstand. I'm not talking about you jumping in. Oh, sweet. Oh, no, I like that stuff. No, I was good with that. No, but that's it's, it's the respect for technique, comments, all that other stuff. That's really the secret. Okay. 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 Okay.
it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a situation. Yeah. Yeah. So you got it today. Okay. That's the whole yes, thing. I did. No problems at all. But then I told yeah, you this. Right. I guess I'm stuck. Yeah. That's all I said. Okay. If you thought about it, yeah. Just to share some learning. I get that. Because I can still learn even by Kathy. Yeah. 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 You've gotten good, haven't you? Control and they jump right okay. in and they create more chaos. I said, if they do, I'm going to 